So to start, my husband, our one-year-old and myself live in a rental and have been here for three years now. When we first moved in, there was a random doorbell that would go off. There isn't a doorbell here that we can see. We thought there was probably a battery powered doorbell stored in the attic that is probably dying or malfunctioning. That eventually stopped and we forgot about it for the most part. My husband also used to see what he called shadow people, hear footsteps and have horrible sleep paralysis dreams. I always chalked it up to his mind playing tricks on him or him trying to scare me. It's been a few years since any of that has happened though and for the year that our daughters lived with us, zero spooky things happened. Until last night. My husband works the night shift, so it's just me and the baby most nights. Well, last night my daughter wakes up at around midnight, so I get her and bring her to my bed. She's back asleep, and I'm wide awake, scrolling through Hulu. As I'm searching for a show to watch, I kid you not, the foot of my bed frame and all lifts like half a foot off the ground and slams back down. My daughter is still asleep but I'm frozen in fear. My first thought is someone under my bed but I quickly realised that I couldn't even fit under our bed so that is far fetched but not any better. I quickly scoop my daughter up football style, stand on my bed and jump off the bed as far as possible and run out of the room. I grab our gun, call my husband shaking and sobbing to please come home, then call my mom to come pick us up, one vehicle family. At that point our kitchen lights start to dim until they were completely off, which was the last straw. I took my daughter and went to the front yard in only a t-shirt and panties until my husband got home like 10 minutes. He did a sweep of the house and nothing seemed out of place, which weirdly only made me feel more scared, like I would rather a stranger be under my bed than some invisible force, but I still went to my mom's. I finally fell asleep around 3.30 and my husband picked us up at 5am when he got off work. I'm afraid to sleep here so I've been awake ever since. I don't know how I'm going to be here alone at night anymore. I'm trying to debunk what happened and find an explanation, but I can't. It may not sound scary to you, but I never felt so scared in my life. And scary stuff is 10 times worse when you have a baby to protect. What do I do? How do I bless my house correctly without making it worse? Also, I don't drink or do any drugs, so it's not like I was just tripping. My mom is a paranormal buff, and my husband and I agreed after one too many crappy spouses and scary movies to always believe each other when we say something is up. So they both believe me, but I still feel crazy. Here's some quick background. I'm a 19 year old male still living with his parents and at the time of me writing this, my grandma has dementia. We keep a baby monitor in her room in case she needs something and any of us aren't there. This will be important for later I think. As a child, I've always had an active imagination according to my parents. Now, I've always been skeptical of the supernatural and the scientific with a common belief that everything could be explained. From cold drafts to tricks of the light. This is not to say that I'm not open to the possibility that there could be something else out there, but I am aware that a majority of what we see can be easily explained by the factors that surround us. My grandma finally started showing major symptoms of dementia towards the end of 2018. She and her husband have been living in the same house in Reno, Nevada for the majority of their life. I've gone to visit them a lot throughout my life. Their home is almost like a second home to me. 
Dementia has been tough for my grandma and her surrounding family, as most of our family and relatives live very far away from each other, spread out across most of the US actually. Although I'm proud of my family for their ability to circle the wagons and be there for her for a while, while both my mom and all of my aunts and uncles took shifts to care and help around the house when needed. So getting into the reason why you're probably reading this now, dementia has a variety of side effects on the person that it inhabits. These can vary from forgetting certain things to seeing people who have passed and gone. I'm well aware of these symptoms and side effects that my grandma has. However, I still have no good explanation for what I'm about to elaborate on. One weekend, my father, my mother and I were all spending a weekend up at grandma and grandpa's house. Now I must preface to say that it is not uncommon for a caretaker to usually be there for my grandma in the mornings, when family is not around, just getting up etc. However, this event initially took place during the evening at around 6 or 7 o'clock. Now from the very centre of the living room, one has a visual sightline to the hallway that leads down to the bedrooms, and a sightline that leads out to the main door. My mother and father, being germaphobes, had just come back from the bathroom after washing their hands and were standing in the living room with me. My aunts and uncle were present as well. My grandfather was preparing the meal to be placed on the table when I felt a sudden sensation. It's all I can describe it as, as the hairs began to stand on the back of my neck. This is when I caught just right off the corner of my eye something zoom right past the door sight's line. I didn't get a good look at it because it was going too fast. Everyone that was present in the house was currently in the living room with me, with the exception of my grandma. It's important to note that she's wheelchair bound and is nowhere near as mobile as this thing was. I stood up from where I was sitting and asked everyone present, is there somebody else in the house? to which I got many confused looks and was told no. The figure had to be at least five feet tall. Mind you, I actually never saw the bottom half of it, as it was obscured by the lampshade that also was in the sight line. However, this moment was eclipsed entirely by what happened next, as off the baby monitor, I could hear my grandmother having a conversation with someone in her room. My dad, the marine, and my grandmother, also a marine, rushed through her bedroom door thinking an intruder was there. When asked who she was talking to, she said her parents. Being a skeptical guy, I started running down the checklist. Are there any openings or windows in which a person could have entered without any of us noticing? No. Was there any audio or any ringtones going off in her room, or the immediate room, over to make the voice that we were hearing talking to my grandma? No. Was there anybody else in the house that could explain the figure that I saw walk past the hallway at the time? After thorough investigation by both of the marines in the household, the answer we came up with was no. While I'm just as afraid as the next guy that I had just seen something that I cannot explain, I'm somewhat comforted by the fact that it's someone my grandma knows. As my uncle and I were talking about it later on, he believes that getting closer to death sort of melds the gateway between this world and the next. He says it's entirely possible that Nonna and Nono came to visit and be with their daughter in what must be, I can only imagine, a very trying time for her. We like to leave the ceiling fan on in my son's bedroom because otherwise the air in his room gets really stale, if that makes sense. It's hard to describe, but if there's no airflow, it feels almost like stagnant energy in there. I always leave his fan on low 
and sometimes it acts up and starts spinning really fast out of nowhere. Obnoxiously fast, to the point that I'm concerned it's going to fall off the ceiling. I've always chalked this up to some sort of electrical surge or malfunction, and have turned it off for a while. When I turn it back on, it's normal. So one night a couple weeks ago, I came out of the bathroom, directly across from my son's room, separated by about 7 feet of hallway, and noticed his fan is doing that weird thing I previously mentioned. It was spinning like crazy, so hard it was kind of wobbling and shaking, you know? Really intense. I looked at the fan, and instead of going in his bedroom to turn the fan off, I just kept staring at it. I literally couldn't look away. It was like I was in some sort of trance. My mind went completely blank, and I have no idea how long I was staring at this fan for. Suddenly, the bathroom door slammed directly behind me, breaking me out of this trance. There was this blood-chilling fear that rushed through my body. I screamed and ran downstairs to where my husband was sitting on the couch. Even my husband was scared because he could immediately tell from my scream that it was some sort of paranormal fear, and not a scream of physical pain or something normal, which also seems weird to me that he was able to pick up on that. Thankfully, my son wasn't in his room at that time of the incident. He was sleeping over at his grandmother's. My son hasn't slept in his room since. Has anyone else had a similar experience? I have this nagging fear in the back of my mind that his room may be some sort of portal or something, and that's why his fan goes crazy sometimes, because the portal is being used or is active. I feel like I should add that my son, who's two and a half years, has experienced some night terrors ever since we moved him into that room around 16 months of age. I've always assumed that his night terrors were attributed to his blood sugar dropping in the middle of the night and started giving him a healthy snack just before bed, which has helped to cut back his night terrors. But I can't help but wonder if perhaps something else may be contributing to these nightmares he has. Twice now, I've had some someone say they've seen my doppelganger in real life, and not in a good way. Both times were unrelated, but left these people feeling strange and creeped out. I lived in a share flat a few years back, and one of the other ladies I lived with said she saw me outside the kitchen when I was out staying elsewhere. She said it was like me, but made her feel uneasy and scared. Almost like an uncanny feeling would be the best way to describe it. She never saw her again, and just said she was standing in the corridor beside the kitchen, like a fucking ghost. The other day, I get to work, and I'm fairly new to this job, about three months in. I was coming in for the night shift, and my colleague went out of his way to come and find me, to say he'd had a creepy experience that morning where he saw me outside work. My exact clothing, my face, everything. He told my boss and they worried I'd come in the wrong time as I was due in on the night. The way he explained it was similar to the above. Who is she? What, if anything, might this mean? When I was about 11 or 12 years old, I used to live in a wooded area in South Carolina. There weren't really any neighbors around and we had two acres of land. And the only way to get in was in the front gate. So there isn't anything to explain what I saw. One night when little me was live streaming on Instagram back in 2017, I was just talking to a few friends for fun. And I was sitting at my desk, which is on the left side of my room, which is where I had my phone placed down and drawing and answering questions and just comments in general. Sadly, back then, you couldn't save Instagram live streams, so I don't have the video evidence. 
My room was on the second floor, and it was typically the attic, but the last owners turned it into a giant room. So the only two ways you could come into my room is by coming up the stairs from the first floor, or by the deck outside, which also had stairs and sliding glass doors, which I had a metal bar on the bottom of, so nobody could open it from the outside. Back to the main story. So when I stopped drawing for a second to look onto my phone and answer a comment, I saw from a friend was, who's that behind you? I didn't want to look back because I thought it was one of those pranks kids used to say, ha, made you look. So my smart butt decided to move myself a little bit to the side to see through the camera what was up. I saw a black silhouette of a man standing there in the middle of my room with no facial features. I spun around and saw this thing standing there motionless and I blinked a few times rapidly to see if it was making things up, but no, it was still there. Genius me decided to get up from my seat and run through this thing to turn on the remaining main light that I had and when I looked back, it was gone. I went back to my live stream and my friends, if they saw what the fuck just happened, and they just commented that they did. The next day at school, I told my friend what I saw, and she said it was probably a shadow person. I looked it up and found out there is a shadow person called the Hatman, which is what exactly what I saw that night. If I can link a photo of the web of the Hatman, I'll do it as so. From that time, I still see shadow people during the night and daytime. What does this mean? My brother at the time was in his late teen, early adult years, and keep in mind that he was at home with us. This was around the early hours of the morning, between 1 and 3 a.m. He had already worked his shift in the daytime, so imagine the surprise to the security guard that was on night shift at the time when he saw my brother standing at the gate asking to be let in. The security guard said he had a gut feeling that something was seriously off, but he interacted politely nonetheless, pointing out that he thought my brother had already worked his shift. The spirit was persistent, so the guy said he'd go and check the work log. Naturally, he was right, but when he looked back, there was nobody there. The other time happened to my cousin. I was told that this happened twice in regards to it taking her form, and both times, my auntie and uncle let it in. The one I have a clear memory of was when she had classes, and so she got ready for school and left home. Her parents were going about their morning normally, when not that long afterward, they get a knock at the door. They open it, and there, supposedly, is my cousin. Only she's dressed in a Sulu chamba, a Fijian traditional wear. They're concerned, and it's weird, but my aunt and uncle brush it off and let her in, finding it odd that she's uncharacteristically quiet. That's when they say that my cousin ends up eating whatever she can get her hands on in the kitchen, just eating ravenously. Then she heads to her room to sleep. She sleeps until the afternoon, waking up and just leaving without a word. A few minutes or so afterward, my actual cousin comes bouncing back home, waving her friends by and chattering about her day. Understandably, my aunt and uncle were freaked. That and she really had been gone the whole day as her friends in the school pretty much confirmed her attendance in the log. There are a lot more cases i found people from my country talk about online. It seems more common than I thought. A parent arriving home and acting the same way, eating everything they can find before leaving, only for their actual parent's car to roll into the driveway moments later. That kind of thing. This happened years ago, 
but I'd love to hear what others think. I used to nanny for a family. When I started with them, they lived in a different condo and then moved about four months later into a different condo in a different town. Now, at both places, I always started my day at either 4am or 5am, mostly the 5am. At condo number one, if I got there at 4am, I would lay down for a bit because the baby didn't wake until almost 7am. The main living room floor had stairs up to the bedrooms and down to the garage. Never felt weird or uncomfortable laying down there. After they moved though, things got weird. Same working times and same routine. If I got there at 4am, I'd lay on the couch and try to nap. This place also had stairs leading into the main living area, coming from the bedrooms. But in this condo, I couldn't ever feel comfortable laying down. Always felt like someone was at the stairs and always felt like someone was going to rush in at any minute. It was only me and the baby there. Twice, when I was feeding the baby at his high chair with my back to the stairs, it felt like someone was walking up behind me. Of course, no one was there. One of the times though, it felt like someone rushed up to me on my right side and when I quickly turned to look, something rushed up and whispered into my left ear. Couldn't make anything out, but it was enough to make me jump out of my chair and turn left to see what was happening. The baby never reacted, never looked at the stairs in a strange way, never fussed. Sounds never came through on the baby monitor. Kinda happy when the family moved out of state and I didn't have to go there again. I'm 24. The events happened when I was 16 to 18. I forgot about these events for my own sanity until my older sister brought them up recently. For some background, I used to live in a country house with my two sisters of similar ages and my parents. My older sister would constantly complain about not being able to sleep because she was scared of evil presences she could sense in the house. Even though she never saw anything, my parents had to take her to therapy because she was constantly scared. I personally found her fright ridiculous and would tell her to man up. But then I saw some things that made me rethink. The first time something freaky happened, I was doing some readings for school late at night and started dozing off. I tried to stay awake because I had an exam on the readings the next day but I simply couldn't manage to keep my eyes from closing. With my eyes still shut, I closed the book I was reading from and turned off my light. It was second nature at this point. I'd been living in the house for almost 10 years and didn't need to look to stretch my arm and turn the switch off. I drowsily opened my eyes for a second as I started to lay down and on top of me, on all fours, saw a girl staring right into my eyes. She was wearing a white nightgown, I know, what a cliche, and looked pale and almost as if she was glowing light. She looked about my age or younger. I screamed at the top of my lungs and immediately turned the light back on, just to see nobody was there. My dad came to see if I was okay, and when I told him what happened, we decided I must have dreamt the girl and scared myself. When I told my mom the next day, she said she thought it was my imagination, but she later on admitted that my scream had caused her the chills that night, and that she had never seen me as scared as I was that morning. About a year later or so, I was sleeping deeply when I felt someone pull my hair. I assumed my hair was caught under my pillow or something, and I brushed it off and turned back to sleep. Then. I felt my hair pulled up again, not just pulled, but tugged, a single strand of hair as if someone was trying to wake me up. I was so scared that I simply covered my head with my blankets without looking, and I silently cried myself back to sleep. I told my mom what happened the next day, and she, 
a huge skeptic, called a Catholic priest to cleanse the house with holy water. A few months later, there was nobody in the house and I went in for a shower. I started hearing a very weird voice calling out my dog's name. I turned off the shower multiple times and it would stop and start again. I thought it was so weird, so I got out the shower in my towel and went to see if there was someone there. Then, the voice started calling my name. It eventually stopped, and I saw nobody. I moved out of that house for college, and my parents moved out shortly after. Since then, nothing weird like that has happened to me again. I was wondering if anyone that knows about this stuff can tell me if it sounds like there was something in my house. About six years ago, I was sleeping in my bedroom facing the window next to my bed. If I sleep like that, the door to my room is at my back. This specific morning, I remember shocking awake but still facing the window and feeling like someone was standing behind me, basically waiting for me to notice them so they could attack me. That's what it felt at the moment. As time slowly went on, I felt my anxiety raising like something was going to happen. I don't know if I'd describe it as me being increasingly scared or if it was my body detecting something naturally. But at the height of my fear, I hear what sounded like a hiss. It came when I expected it to, but it was so clear and short that I almost forgot what it sounded like even after a few minutes it happened. About a year after that, the same incident occurred, but on it gets a little worse. My parents had been gone for the weekend and I was sick with a cold, so I slept in their room for that Saturday. I've always felt weird about their room. I don't know why I do, since it's a new house and all. More on house history later. It was night time, maybe around midnight. And this recurring theme of feeling like someone was standing by the side of my bed didn't go away that night. I tried being ballsy and sleeping on my back to show I wasn't scared, but I just couldn't sleep. So I turned my back to the expanse of the room, also where the door, closet and entry to a bathroom exist. And I slowly drifted away, only to wake up around 4am and feel the dread of someone standing not just next to the bed, but standing so close that their head was looking down on me from directly above me. I knew I'd see nothing, but it was so intense that I just couldn't believe it myself. I'm Hindu, but I'm not an avid churchgoer. I've never been that religious besides what I grew up with. I turned on a mantra that's supposed to repel evil, but all I heard after about a minute of playing it was pure laughter from behind me. I was in deep fear at that point and after about 15 minutes, I got up and went back to my room. I still had the mantra playing, but louder than before. About a month later, I'd stayed up all night and my dad was home. It had to be about 7 or 8 a.m. where I again had my back to the door in my room and heard the same distinct hiss from the first encounter. This time, I was more curious on if I could see anything, so I turned to check what was there after about 30 seconds of gathering myself. Nothing. Here's my dilemma. I mentioned my house was new, and I'm certainly not joking. I lived in the house next door to this one from birth for about 14 years. In fact, my current house was previously a parking lot that my parents owned, so there's no possible way there should be any ghosts or anything, right? These aren't even the craziest things that have happened, I think. I'll answer any questions that anyone may have. My uncle passed away in August of 2020 and I spent more than a month at his house, helping my aunt and her kids get through the worst of the times. I slept alone in the upstairs portion of the house. If I'm laying down on my back, 
There's a window on my left. To my right is the door to the room. To the left of the door is a closet. For the second week I was there, I had sprained my back pretty bad from lifting boxes and I was prescribed painkillers from the doctor. So here's how the first two weeks went, so there's no confusion. First week, nothing happened. I was too tired to notice anything either. Second week, nothing happened. I had one week worth of painkillers for my back pain. We come to the third week now. This is when I started to feel like someone was standing in the corner by the closet and I had to sleep with loud music in my airpods to ignore it. One night, me and my cousins Richard and Sonder hung out in the daughter of my passed away uncle's room. We had some visitors and so we had to leave the room. I was the oldest by far, so I made sure everyone left the room before I turned off the lights and we all went to the living room. About 30 minutes later, the visitors left and we went back into my cousin's room, only to find the light on again. This may seem small, but I was 100% sure I turned off the lights because I'm very peculiar about lights being on that don't need to be on. My cousins Richard and Sonder remember this clearly as well. We felt uncomfortable, so we hung out in a different room. Still in the third week, me, two of my aunts and my cousin were sitting in the living room. The TV remote was sitting on the kitchen counter and the TV was off. All of a sudden, it just turned on and off, just like that. And no one acknowledged that this happened. 10 minutes later, I went upstairs and I smelled something like raw fish. The stairs are located behind the TV that turned off and on. I read that it could be electrical problems, but that wasn't possible because you couldn't smell it behind the actual TV. I asked others if they smelled it, but no one else did. I read in other places that raw fish smells can be linked to a spirit wandering. Now, we come to the fourth week. The nights are pretty bad. I would get like three or four hours of sleep because it feels like someone is just waiting for me to let my guard down. Randomly at this point, I'd find the closet in my room just open. I made it a point to lock it if someone left it open, but other times it made no logical sense because I knew no one went to the closet when it opened. Same trend every night. Fifth and final week, I felt increasingly threatened by staying there. I was helping more than anyone, so why would my uncle make me feel like I should leave the house? On the last night, things were weird. I was extremely tired, so instead of me staying up and having a stare down with the corner, I fell asleep facing the window and my back to the door. Around five to four in the morning, I felt something poke my back and I was shocked awake to see if someone was in the room with me. At that point, I just put on the light and read a book till morning. Upon going home, the smell of incense stuck to my car for a day or two. The night I was driving home, felt like I he was in the back seat, repeatedly saying my name. To start this off with a little bit of backstory, I've always been super into the paranormal, from a really young age. I've always been super interested in ghosts, demons and demonic possession. I've seen about every horror movie there is, etc. I live in a small town in Ohio, with the population only being about 10,000 people. Where I live, directly under my house, it is widely believed that is Indian burial grounds, and I live right next to a cemetery, a nursing home, and a prison. So lots of opportunities for hauntings, lol. Anyways, I had been watching TikTok one night, and I saw a TikTok about skinwalkers. I had never really looked too much into them, so this piqued my interest. I looked into a bunch of stuff and ended up watching a documentary about them. One thing I read said whistling used to be a way to call them to you. Stupidly, I whistled without thinking about it. Ever since that night, there have been lots of strange occurrences around my house. 
sounds of fingernails being dragged down the window on a second story window with no trees around. Sounds of people screaming in pain in the distance till they slowly get closer while starting to scream my name. Weird inhumane figures in the fields and woods. There's also a demon attached to my dad. So maybe it's him doing this to try and scare me. We've communicated with this demon through Ouija boards and spirit boxes for about a year. I know, bad idea. Maybe this is the demon playing onto my fears because I'm terrified of old tribal legends. I do not screw this stuff. Please give me any suggestions or answers you may have. I've been experiencing sleep paralysis ever since I was a teenager and had my fair share of encounters with shadow people during these episodes. I'm so used to it to the point that I can tell it'll happen before it does. And this is exactly why I know what happened to me today wasn't sleep paralysis. It was a pleasant dream. It didn't seem to be taking any dark turn, which is unusual for me these days. I experienced frequent nightmares. But all of a sudden, I heard a voice, which was not part of the dream. It sounded real, very real and inhuman. I'm not sure how to describe a voice, as I'm not a native speaker, and thus the lack of the vocabulary to do so. But it was close to a whisper through my left ear, and it pronounced my name very slowly, almost like a broken record if that makes sense. I was terrified the instant I heard it and I woke up screaming, still hearing the voice. When I looked at the corner of my bed, I saw something, some sort of entity that didn't look the least bit human. I'm not sure how to describe it, but there was some light coming through the window and it did seem to have a humanoid shape, but everything else around it was just off. It was not a shadow person. I've seen the grinning man before, and I know how people describe shadow people, and this thing definitely wasn't a shadow person. It was real. I could see it clearly, and its features seemed more apparent than shadow people. Again, I'm not a native speaker, so I'm struggling in order to describe this. This thing stood there looking at me for what could not be more than a couple seconds. And then, it simply disappeared. But it wasn't a dream, I was awake. I was home alone, all my family members are in another city, and there was no one else in the house with me. Now the thing is, I've heard this male voice before, sometimes during sleep paralysis, when I close my eyes trying not to see the hallucinations, and needless to say, it's just terrifying, or sometimes it wakes me up. It's not part of the dreams I have. It feels like someone else is in the room with me and is urging me to wake up. In these cases, it tends to be much calmer, soothing voice. But today, it was an eldritch abomination. Also, this is not the first time I see that entity. Something similar happened before in another city. I woke up from a nightmare and momentarily saw a tall entity looking at me from the corner of my bed. But it was so dark, I couldn't see its features. It wasn't a shadow person. I don't know if it has been proven to be a fact, but you've probably heard the myth about children being able to see things that others can't or even have conversations with ghosts. Now this is not about ghosts, but there has to be some kind of logic to it. I really need to get this off my chest. When I was around the age of five to eight years old, something happened that I can't explain. I was sleeping in my parents' bed. I woke up from whatever reason and felt something was off. The air felt warm and off-putting. The scent strange, nothing that I've recognized. Before you read this paragraph, I know it doesn't make sense. Just bear with me. 
I remember sitting up, and as my eyes adjusted, I could see barely illuminated white worms wiggling through the mattress, approximately five centimeters in length. There were hundreds of them, standing up and fighting to reach higher. I was shocked, but I can't remember if I was scared. I reached my hand into the worms and I felt no resistance. My hand just passed through like it was nothing there. No reaction from the worms that I recall. I turned my head to see my father, soaked in a bloody and flesh-like blanket. Instantly making me wake up my mother, she woke up and sat beside me, consoling me while I pointed at the worms. I don't remember what we talked about or really what happened next. I spoke to my mother about this a few months ago, and she remembers the whole situation. I asked if she saw anything. She declined, but told me how much I apparently cried. When asking further about what it was, she couldn't give me a straight answer. My mother believes in the paranormal, so I don't know if she is hiding something from me to not scare me, but I doubt that this is the case as I'm now 24 years old. This is additional info just in case. Apparently, my older brother has gotten sleep paralysis in their room a few times, and also seen a blue or green ball of light, something along those lines. This happened to him a few years ago, though when he was home alone. He said to never sleep there again. The only time I can remember having sleep paralysis was a few years ago. It dawned on me that it could be linked to something that used to happen in our house. I remember waking to hear someone coming up the stairs in my house. The top of the stairs are outside my bedroom door. You can't really see the actual stairs, but you can see the landing. I remember looking over and seeing this all black figure with no face slowly creeping to the top of the stairs, turning to face me, and just standing there. I remember trying to move or do anything, but I could only move my head left to right. I didn't make a solitary sound. I just stared at the figure as this dark and ominous noise got louder and louder. I tried to shout out to my mum in the other room, but as I did, this black figure darted towards me, and as I closed my eyes, it had disappeared. As I brought my head back to look at the ceiling, I could see this figure laying over me at the bottom of my vision, looking up at me. I remember I started to cry in absolute fear of this thing. Next thing I know, I jump out of bed and I'm covered in cold sweats with tears down my face, barely catching my breath. Fast forward a good few years. I'm telling this same story to my mom and sister when bad dreams came up in conversation. I told them both and they had a real shocked look on their face. Turns out, when I was really young, they used to hear what they originally thought was each other walking up and down the stairs late at night, way past my bedtime back then. They heard someone or something walking up and down the stairs along the landing, and then it would stop. They never told me, as I was quite young when it happened. On top of that, there have been times where my sister would come home drunk after a night out, and she had seen a dark figure around the house, specifically on the stairs, but she always blamed that on the alcohol. I thought it would be an interesting thing to share with you all. It certainly spooked me when they all told me their experiences but nothing out of the ordinary has happened since.